Look, Elon's on that stage, jumping around, skipping like a dipshit on these things. You know it. Kamala Harris's vice presidential running mate, Tim Walls, made fun of weirdo billionaire Elon Musk at a recent rally. Brian Tyler Cohen broke all of this down on his show. We're going to take a look at clips from this rally with Tim Walls, as well as Brian Tyler Cohen breaking all of it down. I will share my thoughts from time to time about this as well. Let's check this out together. And that's not a joke. But look, I'm not going to waste all the time I'm in. I'm going to talk about his running mate. His running mate, Elon Musk. Um, seriously. Seriously. Where is Senator Vance after he got asked the simplest question in the world at the debate? Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? And after two weeks, he finally said, no, he didn't. That's where he's been spending his time. But uh, that's it. So look, Elon's on that stage, jumping around, skipping like a dipshit on these things. You know it. Think about it. Think about that. That guy is literally the richest man in the world spending millions of dollars to help Donald Trump buy an election. Now look, they're saying the quiet parts out loud now because Donald Trump has already promised that he would put Elon in charge of government regulations that oversee the businesses that Elon runs. That's a hell of a buy. He could spend billions to make more than 10 billion on the back end. So in other words, Donald Trump in front of the eyes of the American public is promising corruption. That's what he's promising you. And you know what? I don't believe, I don't believe he keeps many promises, but he'll keep that one. I guarantee you he'll keep that one. And Tim Walls is exactly right about this. And Elon Musk has also, so Donald Trump is saying he would put Elon Musk in charge of overseeing the budget and making cuts to the budget. And Elon Musk has said already that he would cut about $2 trillion from the budget. And Elon Musk has said that as a result of that, he would probably need increased security because people are going to be so mad. Well, think about it. You think Elon Musk is going to cut stuff that benefits him, or do you think he's going to cut benefits, or is he going to make cuts to areas of the budget that benefit people like you and me? Yeah, they're, you know, the cuts are going to be to anything that helps regular people. Things like Medicaid and Medicare and things like that. The EPA, you know, the, they're talking, I mean, the Republicans are talking openly about all the cuts they would like to make to the EPA and how hard they would like to make life for the people who work for the EPA. So this is something, you know, it's probably not being talked about as much as it should be by the mainstream media that they want to, you know, and this is something anybody with a brain has known for a long time, but the Republicans are openly talking about gutting the government and just making it even more than it is now for the very, very rich like Elon Musk and the rest of us get crumbs or nothing at all. Even with the regulations that we have in place, there are still all kinds of horrible things happening in terms of what companies are doing to the environment and all of that. But at least we have some protections in place. If Donald Trump gets reelected and he has a clown like Elon Musk anywhere near the White House, we'll have even fewer protections. That was Tim Wallace putting Trump's actual running mate, Elon Musk, on blast for this moment that is so cringe, I'm embarrassed for Elon. This rocket company is the only reason we can now send American astronauts into space. Take over, Elon. And look, his weird jumping. Even Trump looks like, Elon, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Just jumping around like a fool. 
Satan aside, of course Trump is attracted to Elon. He is a billionaire serving other billionaires. Guys, this is why Trump is in the race. It is not to help you, it is to help himself and people like him. Don't forget that while Donald Trump presented himself as some populist in 2016, that once he actually got into office, he did nothing for the same people that he pandered to for months. No jobs boom, no manufacturing renaissance, no healthcare plan that was cheaper and more affordable, no infrastructure upgrade. You know what Donald Trump used all of his political capital on? A tax cut for millionaires and billionaires. Do not listen to what they say, watch what they do. And Elon? Well, this guy's entire identity is predicated on hoarding as much wealth as humanly possible. His Twitter account is littered with him playing victim that he pays the most taxes in this country, apparently unaware that he is also the richest person in America, and that one goes hand in hand with the other. But because he knows that Donald Trump will extend his 2017 tax cut and help people like Elon, now Elon is doing everything he can to ensure that that comes to pass. That is why he's pulling stunts like giving voters a million dollars per day. It's not because he's generous, it's because spending a few million bucks now means he will keep billions if Donald Trump gets into office. This is what you get with Republican leadership, the wealthy helping the wealthy. And this whole phenomenon isn't new. Going back to Reagan in the 1980s, the GOP force-fed the American people this insane notion that if you heap wealth onto the ultra-rich, that it'll trickle down to the poor. Well, guess what? Republicans have tried this for 60 years, and this is what income inequality looks like in this country today. Starting in, surprise, surprise, 1980 with Ronald Reagan. And it's... And Brian Tyler Cohn is exactly right. Trickle-down economics has not worked, but they're still pitching this, and they're even more extreme with it than they ever were. Again, you have Elon Musk wanting to cut, I believe it's a third of the budget, is what he's talking about. And those are all things that will benefit normal people. And they're going to want to, ta to cut taxes even more. Donald Trump has talked about just entirely getting rid of the income tax, and going back to tariffs, and tariffs are the way that the budget was funded prior to the income tax, that would be an absolute disaster. I mean, any economist of any worth has said the tariffs, and if Donald Trump would eliminate the income tax, would be a total economic disaster for the country. It's gotten worse and worse every single year, despite insistences that all you need to do is let rich people hoard all their money and it'll apparently help everybody else. So how much worse does income inequality need to get in this country before Republicans will finally concede defeat? How many more people need to live in abject poverty in this country before billionaires finally concede that maybe, just maybe, they have enough money? When will the Trumps and the Elons of the world finally admit that perhaps other people should be allowed to live with some dignity? And that's the key to all of this. While Republicans pit their base against immigrants and LGBT people and the Democrats and the poor as the cause for all of their problems, none of those people are responsible for the economic situation in this country. Let me be clear, the reason that you are hurting financially is not because poor people are getting food stamps. The reason that you're hurting financially is because rich people like Trump get into power with the help of people like Elon, and then Trump will pass laws benefiting Elon's wallet as repayment. I don't mean to be cynical here, but they don't care about you. A billionaire is not seeking power to help the working class or the poor. A billionaire didn't become a billionaire by helping the working class or the poor. Donald Trump didn't help the working class when he had the chance the first go around, and he certainly won't as a lame duck president who never again has to face the voters. And this is exactly correct from Brian Tyler Cohen. They don't care in answering his questions previously, you know, how much money is enough and what about the poor and all of that, they don't care about any of that. And, you know, it's, and they don't care about the fact that they're just going to further destroy the environment. I guess they're, they're just going to live in literal bubbles. I don't know. You know, that's the thing that I always wonder about. They don't care about the actual people. You know, you or I could be bleeding to death on the sidewalk and they would walk around us. But in terms of cutting all the regulations with the EPA, they still have to live in the world. Again, unless Elon Musk is going to build a James Bond villain style bunker somewhere, they still have to survive in the world and breathe the air and drink the water and all of that. But, but like Brian Tyler Cohen says, they don't care. They don't care. If everybody is in abject poverty because of them, they would prefer that because that would just be even more wealth for them.
the people like Elon Musk and Donald Trump. I think this is an effective strategy from Tim Walls to make fun of Elon Musk. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, just average voters who don't pay much attention, who don't even know that Elon Musk is involved with Trump's you know, campaign and possibly his administration and would be making all these cuts. It's something that definitely needs a lot more coverage, but with just a few days to go until the election, we're probably not going to see much of it from the mainstream media when there's a crazy thing said every single day, multiple crazy things by Donald Trump and the people around him. But what do you think about what Tim Walls had to say about Elon Musk as well as Brian Tyler Cohen's explaining that the rich only want their tax cuts. They do not care about the rest of us. And, you know, for all the MAGA people, Donald Trump does not care about them. He does not care about any of us. He cares about himself. If people don't see that at this point, they're never going to. Let me know what you think in the comments about Donald Trump, Elon Musk, Brian Tyler Cohen, Tim Walls, anything that you want to comment on. I love to read your comments. Make sure to give me a like and subscribe so I can continue growing the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like this content, please do so so I can bring out more content like this. This is Chris on Culture. I will see you in the next video.